not every trans uh, uh, woman is a rapist. You know, this is a, such a dishonest thing that's happening. Whoever said that? There are rapists. No, the, it's not you, but Whoever J.K. Said Rowling. That? J.K. Rowling's not said that. Being, they're rapists. They're not all rapists. I mean, to be fair, yeah, it's been Jackie Riley didn't say every trans woman. Yeah, she hasn't. Yeah, but and why does she, she's why does she put barely up litigious, so I'd watch out, Yasmin. I mean, Jesus, you can't just go around saying things like that. Yeah, I mean, th this new law, the Scottish hate crime law, it has been put in as as uh, First Minister Hamza Youssef was telling us um, to protect uh, people in Scotland, whatever their gender, whatever their race and religion, etc. And that it's the police who will investigate if anyone's guilty of breaking the new law. It's not social media users. It's not a weapon of culture war. It's not something to be waded in and about online. Yeah. And there'll be a high threshold when it comes to charging people. So what's the problem? There is no problem. And I have to say, I am heartily sick of JK Rowling's and her campaign. I'm a feminist. She's a feminist. But many very close friends of mine who are feminists are in that camp. And I find it completely dispiriting that, you know, one of the things, one of the things I've fought against all my life is this idea of biological determinism, that our bodies as women or females define us. Mm. I've fought against this from puberty. And now we have these really brilliant feminists insisting that we are defined by our biology. I find that really dispiriting. And friends of mine have trans children and young people. And it's causing them so much upset and pain. Um, so I'm really not in that camp. And I find, I think this is a good law, a set of laws. As you said, you know, nobody's going to go around arresting uh, you, me, or anybody else for the slightest um, comment we make. But we have statistics now. The trans community is more uh, likely to be discriminated against, abused, and attacked than anybody else in the LGBT um, uh, Q, uh, rainbow. Don't forget the Q plus, yeah. Q plus, yeah, in that rainbow. Um, and disability, uh, disabled people are also now. But that's the risk. Um, Those are the people that are vulnerable, and I can totally understand what you're saying. But you say that uh, anyone's going to be able to say whatever they think, and we're not at risk of breaking the law. But I no, suppose nobody to... should be able to say whatever we think. Sorry, nobody should actually have the right to abuse me. That's not a, a right of freedom of speech, and yet they do. They abuse me all the time, and I have to fight them. I d mostly don't report them. But there have been times when I've had to get the police involved. But the point is, are you actually, confident that it won't affect? You said we won't be affected talking to me, but anyone can report anyone. How could you be confident that you wouldn't be affected they, by this? The, the threshold. I mean, this is a law. This isn't just something that they've thrown out, you know, out of a set of balloons. They've thought about this and they've said that ultimately it's like any other law. The threshold is defined and it's it's not um a, a low uh, bar and we have had we had a murder of a trans schoolgirl by two young people all three are victims of a huge tragedy here and the mothers of one perpetrator and the victim have got together to explain to us how difficult it is for a child to be a trans. Okay, Listen, thank, thank you for kicking us off, uh, Yasmin. Just yeah. hold, your, hold your guns for a minute because Ella has now joined us. Hi there, Ella. Hello, apologies for being late. No huh? worries. <laughs> you turn, turn up late, you get to wade straight into the culture war. <laughs> Ella okay. Whelan from uh, Spiked. Um, yes, we, we're discussing, as, as I'm sure you've deduced, J.K. Rowling's comments on <laughs> X today about the Scottish hate crime law. Mm. What, what was your feeling, first of all, on seeing the tweets? And secondly, how would you react to what Yasmin was just saying, which is essentially that Hamza Yusuf is right to say there'll be a high threshold when it comes to charging people. It isn't up to social media to be judge, jury and executioner. And, uh, you know, essentially, this is a good law and he's proud that he brought it in. Well, in terms of J.K. Rowling, I think most people understand that she's uh, someone who has faced a huge amount of unfair and unpleasant um, criticism, or well, not just criticism, abuse, for saying something that's very normal and uh, and commonsensical um, about sex and gender. Um, and it's one of those kind of weird 
weird factors of our current culture wars, which is that things that most people don't think are controversial become very controversial. Um, I'm in uh, entirely in agreement with her views on the gender wars. Um, so to the I'm extent quite... that you would say to a trans woman, you're not a trans woman, you're a man. No, I think most people make a distinction between what you do on an individual basis and what you talk about politically in the round. So but she is talking about um, individuals, isn't she? She's literally posting their photos and saying this is a man. Now, obviously, yeah. she's choosing trans women who have committed crimes. So it's very difficult to feel sympathetic. But that, that nonetheless is what she's doing. She is saying you're a man. But I think that it's important that she's talking about people who've committed crimes because in the context of Scotland, and um, I was on Question Time with um, one SNP politician a while back who refused to um, name uh, one of the rape one of the male rapists who had decided to transition as a male. He just she just kept saying he's a rape, not he. That was satisfactory. Yeah, yeah. Th they are a rapist, and so I think it's important to sort of say, well, come on now, if you're going to force my hand, if you're going to if you're going to make me say what is actually true, I'm going to say it. But the 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 sort of I think the sad fact is because there's been such lunacy coming out of, uh, in particular, Scotland about this issue. Um, it's ruined all the room for nuance. And the nuance is that most people on an individual basis um, desire to be polite, caring, um, you know, n nice to each other. And so, no, you wouldn't go up to, well, I wouldn't anyone go up to someone and say, of course, you're not Sally, you're Sam. You know, because why would you want to ruin someone's day? But if you're asking me if I think that Sally can, in fact, become Sam and that that and that, you know, at, as a sort of biological reality, I'd have to say, well, no, that's the case because it isn't true. But just on the hate crime... But I just, um, I, 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 sorry, and you, we should get on to the hate crime thing. I was just, I'm just fascinated please. by that idea because it's not about regulating what you think. People aren't saying People aren't saying you should think this. They're saying you shouldn't broadcast it. You shouldn't make people feel vulnerable and you shouldn't stir up hatred, which it could. But this is, I mean, what do you mean by, what do you mean stir up hatred? Again, I don't, I, you know... Well, it's I, a think, weird, I think it's, it's a arguable. weird world. It's arguable, isn't it, that people could look at J.K. Rowling's series of tweets today, which is why she's done them, and, and literally think, ha ha, look at this bloke in a dress. And the next time they see a trans woman, that will be their attitude towards them, hence stirring up hatred. And anyway, I think, sorry, most, people can, I I think most people can sorry, make the Ella, distinction. Ella, between... can I just say one thing? We have I? the evidence that there has been an increase in um, the abuse and discrimination against trans people in that whole rainbow of LGBTQ, T whatever, <laughs> that this is the group that is most likely to be abused and discriminated against. And actually also, not every trans uh, uh, woman is a rapist. You know, this is a, such a dishonest thing that's happening. Whoever said that? They're a rapist. No, the, it's not you, but J.K. Rowling. That? J.K. Rowling's not said that. They're rapists. They're not all rapists. I mean, to be fair, yeah, but J.K. Rowling didn't say every trans woman. Yeah, she rapist. hasn't. No, and, she's, why does she, and she's why does she fairly put up litigious, so I'd watch out, Yasmin. I mean, Jesus, you can't just go around saying things like that. She's, she's not what? said she's, that. She has highlighted the rapist. Has she not? Yeah. Why? Because in Scotland, they keep <laughs> they seem to keep wanting to give a free pass to this discussion about whether, in particular, sexual sex offenders who discover maybe legitimately and authentically and truthfully, but maybe cynically, decide that they want to transition many? to go this into what... a woman's prison. I mean, no. come on. How many cases live have in the real been... world here? How many rapes are committed by men, men? We highlight, and there have been rapes, and there have been some awful cases. There have been some rapes by asylum seekers. Doesn't mean all asylum seekers are rapists. No one has ever drawn. I well, certainly I've never. No, drawn you that haven't. Conclusion. But I'm saying that's the lobby that is using rape as an instrument, and you're I think that's do, wrong. You're just cheap slandering now, Yasmin, and it's 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 not it cheap help slandering. The They're the slanderers. The I'm not. Well, it's, it doesn't help it the discussion at all. But can exactly I make my point about the yes? I'll come back to you about your point. Don't worry. Yes, you can, and I'll come back to that in a second. But it, it is what J.K. Rowling set up. This isn't it? I mean, you know, this is the discussion. Ella, that, that J.K. Rowling wanted us to have and wanted the media to have. She said, if you agree with me, retweet me. So, I mean, she, it, it is an inflaming conversation. So, in itself, doesn't that underline that it could stir up hatred? 
Because the Scottish hate crime legislation and similar legislation that's been put forward in Ireland and could come forward in England and Wales, it's not out of the question, would potentially criminalise people for saying what that the sky is blue and the grass is green and women are women and men are men biologically. I mean, this is the problem. The reason what look, I'm not JK Rowling, I'm not paid to be JK Rowling's spokesperson or PR person. You should get her on the program. No, no, I'm just asking what you think. Yeah. But I think that there's, you know, I think people get to a level where particularly women (laughs) who, who, you know, have a sort of some skin in the game in relation to this gender war because it's never anything to do with men. It's always to do with what what it means to be a woman and who gets to go into women's spaces and all the rest of it are kind of sick to the back teeth of having to um, kowtow to this idea that it's controversial to talk about women and and women-only spaces or the idea that, no, you don't suddenly become a woman because you've had breast enhancement surgery or you decide that you're a woman or that you wear a dress. I mean, all these things are parts of conversations about feminism and women's rights that are sort of, you know, centuries old about what kind of stereotyping and what kind of way women are seen in society and it's kind of a bit of sick making that suddenly we have to just swallow this whole thing that a whole other group gets to decide what it means to be a woman so i i understand rowling's sort of uh anger about this and i think on a sort of different point which is what i'm more interested in the potential for censorship and a danger to free speech on a variety of political issues under this hate crime legislation is unbelievable. I mean, the Scottish government wants to pry into the most private and personal conversations between anyone, which is a going to be a tragedy for any kind of political organisation, um, you know, a problem for sort of people being able to speak openly in society and it's Sorry, gonna, I, I, I it's going to go allow on. a lot of sort yes. of repression okay. and just to just to yasmin's point really quickly on the lgbt rainbow you're forgetting that <laughs> they're not just it's not all just the rainbow people there's there are people who, groups within that label who are actually infighting at the moment there is the issue of the lgb alliance of i know all that i know all that Ella. we're talking about upset this- about Sorry, I'm back to this. You can can come in, Yasmin, but on the point about people around the breakfast table being to dob in their family, on that, regardless of whether it's on a question of trans issues or something else. Can I also remind uh, listeners that, you know, this, this culture war was set up, absolutely set up by that same lot of people, but these days, including my feminist, some of my feminist friends, in the same way that was set up when gay rights were being delivered and anti-discrimination uh, laws against those who were f- homophobic. I've, I'm so old. I've lived through this. The Women's Equality Act had the same same things happen. End of the world as we know it. But, you know, I, I, let me it tell you, Yasmin. I don't know if Ella knows or remembers Jan Morris. Jan Morris was a historian, a most wonderful writer. And she transitioned and became a woman. I think it was when well, she died about 15 years ago, way, way back. I, and there was no, none of this thing. And I remember meeting her in a toilet one day. I knew she had transitioned. And she said to me, looking straight into my eyes, do you wear petticoats? And I, I was a bit, a bit taken aback, but I wasn't scared. I didn't think she was going to rape me or do anything to me. There was an understanding then that people made these choices, quite hard choices, and went through a lot to get to the identity they felt they really felt comfortable in. All of this thing that's happening now has been set up as a war. And I really think the pain of people, a schoolgirl was murdered, right? We should remember that. You need to stop weaponizing Brianna Jai's um, death in that oh, way. I won't. I just, I, just, I, won't, I, I just think it's because it completely happened, unreasonable. And her mother is doing it. Well, it's it completely was, unreasonable. It was mentioned in the court, Ella, that her trans identity was part of the reason that she was uh, murdered, wasn't it? Yeah, and we know that it's not the only reason. Not the only reason, I mean, but it was mentioned. That, it's legitimate was to mention reason. it. It's not weaponizing that, it, is it? That poor girl just needs to be let rest. I just, I, I hate oh, yeah, the weaponizing sure. of, of that particular death i think you know it's it's a way of sort of trying to shut down a conversation a serious conversation about 
adult life and uh, the way in which we organize ourselves. Okay, I mean, look, let's, take, let's take yes, a deep can breath. Can I just make one you, you last make, point? You which can is make that one last point and then we'll move on. Go on, yeah. Previous, um, previous backlashes to pushes for civil liberties, whether it was gay rights, women's rights, um, all came from conservative, um, <laughs> you know, uh, establishments wanting to close down or not allow people's freedoms. That's not what's happening today. And when gay people demanded the right to um, live how they wanted, to love who they wanted and to sleep with who they wanted to express themselves, um, they never demanded that people pretended that reality didn't exist. The, I think you're completely missing the uniqueness of the trans activist moment. Not Most trans people aren't at all interested in what's going on at the moment in relation to the sort of madness of trying to pretend that uh, up is down and black is white. There is just, you just know, the denial that, of reality. Uh, it's what's different from previous movements. Just finally on that, though, I genuinely don't understand this because actually Nick's just texted us on this as well. He says, Ollie, what Rowling rightly decries is the claim of trans women to have the right to insist to participate in biological women-only spaces and sport. What I don't understand is what this law might do to change us discussing that. The, 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 the contention seems to be that it won't be able... You can't discuss this anymore. You won't be able to discuss women-only spaces anymore because you have to refer to trans women as trans women. I just don't see the connection. You can. You can say, should trans women be able to play women-only sport? You can still say that. You just can't call them men. Yeah, you can you can say what you want, but you have to use our language and you're not allowed to do it in the in a kind of free discourse. Well, you have to use the respectful, label, you, the respectful label no, but, that they've self-defined, so that, that, um, which you'd apply well, to anyone else. OK, but who's they, number one? And and what does respectful mean? What does hateful mean? I mean, we know that these labels have been broadened out beyond any sort of reasonable distinction. But what's the issue? Why is it important <laughs> to be able to say, should men be able to play women's sport rather than should trans women be able to play women's sport? What's the meaningful distinction that matters? Because so if you're if you are a trans woman playing, <laughs> I can't believe I'm having to explain this. Because if you're a trans woman playing a sport with biological women mm. you are somebody with a male body who's mm. grown you know and so no, but that's the a debate lot of people, we'd still be able to have yeah, that debate a lot after of people, calling those people trans women a lot of people think life is too short to sort of mix words and just get straight to the point and but say why does their opinion matter when play it's trans about people's women? people's you're asking me why should we be able to speak freely in a supposedly free country in a free public square? I mean, why should anyone be allowed to do anything? Do we think that we should have these open discussions and not just treat people with respect, but also, uh, I think, not patronise people to be able to say we can have these, we can have these discussions in civil in civil ways without having the Scottish government breathing down our necks okay. and, like you said, listening in on our breakfast conversations. I just think some of your listeners are going to be. They're not listening, listening okay, okay. in the world's got here. We now know that J.K. Rowling won't face prosecution. Um, simply saying that transgender women are men is not a crime, as the police would consider it. So one of the major concerns you have has been removed. In a way, um, but it highlights why we had the concern in the first place, because nobody actually knew what, um, what was going to happen on the 1st of April. And if she hadn't really pushed hard on this, I think we still wouldn't. So um, by doing this, she has brought clarity or hopefully brought clarity because um, it would be absolutely dreadful if now the police decided to prosecute somebody else for yeah. something similar who didn't have her resources. But um, <clears throat> so hopefully it's brought this clarity. But the fact is that the government had an opportunity to write this into the bill and the first stage as it was going through parliament and they waited until it became law they waited until the act was passed they still didn't do anything the police training's been inadequate the police training has been not fit for purpose according to the chair of the police federation so in effect what she did was do the government what the government should have done i i i'm at a loss to know what the scottish government has been playing at all this time of I'm interested in this question also. There's reports that 800 complaints have been made under the, the new law. And some of them, I know Hamza Yusuf said, oh, some of them, we shouldn't have vexatious complaints. But any complaint has to be looked at by a police uh, officer. And therefore, presumably, 
even though some of this stuff won't ever get prosecuted, there'll be a certain amount of resource expended just managing the situation and looking for every time someone sends a tweet, someone will make a complaint and then someone's got to look at it. That's right. And we've seen activists on Twitter already boasting about having made complaints and getting really cross because the police have said there's no crime being committed. And that's largely because the misinformation has been so dreadful and it's been misinformation from the government and from the police, as well as the funded lobby groups who actually push to have this dreadful um, law brought in in the first place. So they've had all this misinformation about what is and isn't a crime. They think they're entitled to complain. And then, as you say, the police have to investigate. One of the people are complaining on Twitter the other day said that officers have been out to their house. So it when you've got thousands and thousands of spurious complaints coming in already, um, this is a huge stretch on an already overburdened police force. Uh, the downside of the law is, I think, very obvious, and we've just talked about it, and, and you know, for, for everyone who believes in free speech. But is there an upside here that we just need to be honest about as well? You might have a transgender person living quietly in Scotland, trying to have their life, being subject to abuse, people stirring up hatred in the terms of the, the new act. They now get better protection. Someone will be better protected today than they would have been at the end of March. That's, that's a good thing, isn't it? I'm not sure they are better protected. I mean, crime, actual crime, has always been illegal. And um, we had a hate crime aggravator which um, covered transgender people before this was brought in. This stirring up part, I think is going to be really hard to prove and really hard to prosecute. And that doesn't mean that people aren't going to be investigated. So I think there's going to be a lot of disappointed people on both ends. There's going to be people who have a terrible time while the police undertake an investigation. And there's going to be people who decide that the law is toothless um, and it's not doing what they were promised or that over-promised by some of the, the groups and organisations who got the Scottish Government to put this in. I mean, you know, right at the beginning of this, when the Scottish Government did flirt briefly with bringing in greater protections for free speech, there was an absolute outcry from people who wanted to use this and weaponise this law to go after people and settle scores. And I'm not sure how that will make the life of an individual better, because I think all this does is ramp up yeah. an already febrile situation. I think that's going to make their lives worse. Because in the end, this boils down to people should be nicer to their, to their fellow man and woman, their fellow human being. And the question is whether... We're spending an awful lot of time on a what amounts to some of it, a social media uh, problem where actually the solution is people being better. But you can't change people for the better, I suppose, through the legal system very easily. And maybe that's where this falls down, that if everyone were a bit nicer to each other, there wouldn't be a problem. But that's not the real world. Well, it's not. And also, um, you know, it's being stoked. So... We know there are people out there saying that, that saying that if you're transgender, your life is going to be dreadful, you're going to commit suicide, you're going to be the victim of crime. And you make people fearful when you push lines like that. And organisations and the government have been pushing lines like that that are going to make people feel their lives are, are terrible um, and are going to get worse and they're going to be on the receiving end of all this vitriol. But that might be true yeah, as well. I mean, a, a, lot of, a lot of trans people would say that is true of their lives. I mean, when they're surveyed, people say they have been targeted by, by people being hateful towards them. Well, yes, but it also includes things like the, the misgendering and um, pronouns and things like that. So I, I think as, as a woman and knowing this sort of level of abuse women face on the streets and in the homes, I... I, I I don't think it's comparable. And of course, women weren't protected by this at all. I think that they they are stoking up fear unnecessarily. And also, I do believe that if Scotland is this terrible place, which we keep hearing the First Minister going on about how hate crimes on the rise and people are... are, are, are it's it, people are living in fear. If Scotland really is this horrible, benighted country, I want to know what the government, who's been in power for years, has been playing at all this time because they could have been sorting out social policies and education yeah. 
that might have helped tackle this. You don't you don't deal with if this really is a problem. You don't deal with it by draconian laws to squash free speech. You should have been dealing with it at source. Unfortunately, Scotland has led the way when it comes to online culture wars that have spread across the world from the anonymous trolls that lit up the 2014 independence referendum debate through to the heated exchanges about transgender rights. When it comes to the Hate Crime Act, people have been getting really, really worked up about the idea that it might criminalise free speech. That is something that the proponents of the Act disagree with. They say that as long as the Act is not abused, there's nothing in there that criminalises average free speech. They say that it needs to pass the test of a reasonable person, not considering the language used, for example, by comedians or politicians or general commentators as being likely to stir up hatred. What critics say is that it doesn't matter whether or not a reasonable person sees it this way. There are plenty of unreasonable people who will make hate crime reports maliciously and just the very reporting and investigation of someone could be punishment enough in itself. So just take us back a step. What exactly is the Hate Crimes Bill? What does it say and what does it change in terms of the law in Scotland? The Hate Crime Bill was brought in to effectively strengthen punishments that can be handed out when someone is a victim of a criminal offence and based around their ethnicity or their sexuality or their gender. Whether or not it is clear exactly what constitutes stirring up hatred is the sort of thing that may fall foul of that law. And, and are there particular groups that it seeks to protect? Yes, there are. The law will protect people on the basis of um, their religion, over their sexual orientation, their age, their transgender identity and people who are disabled. There has been more controversy around the fact that it doesn't protect women, so there's no hate crime based on misogyny. The Scottish Government said that they'll do a, a working group on this, but that was promised by Hamza Youssef, now First Minister, but who was Justice Secretary when this bill went through Holyrood. And here we are with the law about to come into force, and uh, we're, we're no further forward with that working group. And this bill, as you say, has been years in the making. Hamza Youssef was Justice Minister at the time. Was it his initiative, though, or was it Nicola Sturgeon, who was First Minister? Is this one of her sort of key policies? Everything in the Scottish Government under Nicola Sturgeon was effectively part of Nicola Sturgeon's legacy because she ran a very tight ship. Things did not get commissioned, did not get off the ground if she wasn't on board with them. Hamza Youssef has spent a lot of his first year as First Minister trying to scrape some of the barnacles off the boat that were left by Nicola Sturgeon. This legislation is one of those barnacles, but he's decided that the ship will sail better with it still attached. He is still very much dogged by Nicola Sturgeon's legacy. However, he has kept her personally close and defended her from all criticism that makes sense to a degree because Nicola Sturgeon is still largely popular with SNP members, but it does run the risk for Hamza Youssef that he could just be weighed down by his predecessor. Just explain why it was sort of such an important policy to Nicola Sturgeon. It, you know, it sort of it was part of a raft of policies that she seemed to be pushing through at the time. Well, it was, and it connects to the gender reforms that were aimed at uh, making it easier for people to change their gender, which were ultimately thrown out by the UK government. It's an important part of my responsibility to make life a little bit easier for stigmatised minorities yeah. Yeah. in our country Absolutely. to make their lives Absolutely. a bit better and to remove some of the trauma uh, that they live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it is important to do that for the tiny minority of trans people uh, in our society. Nicola Sturgeon spent a lot of time in office, particularly in her latter days in office, saying that she wanted to really step up protections on people's rights. Tell the 
Gender reform, making it easier for people in Scotland to change their gender and lowering the legal age from 18 to 16. It has been one of the most divisive debates since the dawn of devolution. You're a man and I'm a woman. That's your opinion. And again, the criticism was that whilst Nicola Sturgeon worked hard to bring in new legislation to aid minority rights, particularly transgender rights, there are people who say that she just didn't do enough to protect women's rights. And how does Hamza Youssef defend the bill? Hamza Youssef says two things. One is that its ultimate aims are relatively uncontroversial. He points out that stirring up hatred, that controversial part of the bill, has actually been in force for uh, racial hatred for years in Scotland and has been in force in England and Wales for years as well. He also says, as a Muslim man, that he has experienced an incredible amount of racism and that it is the sort of bill that should be brought forward to protect people from minority backgrounds from suffering any of the abuse that he or others have suffered and that anything that can act as a deterrent to that should be welcomed and should be brought forward. This bill is about protecting people against that rising tide of hatred we see far too prevalent in our society nowadays. So unless your behaviour is threatening or abusive and intends to stir up hatred, then you have nothing to worry about in terms of the new offences being created. From the moment this policy was announced, there has been a lot of controversy and a lot of opposition to it. Just talk us through the opposition it's faced. What what are the arguments against it? The arguments in the main are that this bill limits what people may be able to say and may lead to vexatious complaints being made over disagreements about viewpoints on the world. The proponents of the bill say that it would never be criminal, but we have seen lots and lots of instances where vexatious complaints are made about politicians, about prominent public figures, and the worry is that people who disagree online predominantly, and a lot of this is is very online, will end up being investigated by the police, will end up with some form of record because they've been investigated for an alleged hate crime. People worry about closing down free speech and free debate in Scotland. The fear that they'll fall foul of the law. Absolutely, or even just the fear that they will have to deal with being investigated by the police and people will find out about that and that people will then think that there's no smoke without fire. Can you sort of give us an example of, you know, scenarios where this might now be applied? One of the concerns that has been raised, particularly by feminist groups, is that if a a woman was to state that sex is binary and were to say that somebody who is a, a transgender woman is not a woman or their sex is not female, even though their gender identity may be, there are concerns that this could lead to certainly complaints under the new law and people are concerned about at what point fair comment becomes a criminal hate speech. And Kieran, this law comes at a time when there is a global conversation taking place really about free speech and whether rules or or attitudes and and norms are shutting down open debate. That's partly why we've seen Elon Musk and Joe Rogan and figures like that talking about it. They don't often pick up on legal changes in Scotland. How will this law, do you think, shift the dial on that? Well, it's already shifted the dial. In some ways, it doesn't really matter how the law works because, as you say, Elon Musk and Joe Rogan have made their, it must be said, pretty wildly inaccurate comments about the law and its effect. They've already used it. It served its purpose for them. It doesn't matter whether it goes on to work in practice. The only way it can really inform any of this debate now is if indeed it does fail, in which case the same characters, the same bad actors, will come back and use its failures or its controversies for their own political ends again. 
it comes back to that point about seeing something slightly depressing about public life, not just in Scotland, but uh, in the wider Western world just now, that we can't have a grown-up debate about the rights and wrongs, ins and outs, and whether something that was brought forward with good intentions works in practice without it being hijacked by people who have their own agendas to chase. <laughs>